So I'm Margaret Levy, Director of the Center for Advanced Study in Behavioral Sciences, CASBIS, and Professor of Political Science at Stanford University. And my lifelong research has been on the relationship between citizens and government. So there's a lot of conversation about the extent to which uh, both government and the candidates for president and many other candidates are untrustworthy. And I find that very loose talk for a variety of reasons. One, it is historically ungrounded that if we look to the history of the United States, um, there are very few moments in time where confidence in government or candidates has ever been complete. There's always, it's, it's democracy. We're supposed to be skeptical. And we are skeptical, and questions get raised. If we, the other reason that I'm very suspicious of it is the ways we're measuring the trustworthiness of government or how much citizens actually trust government are, to my mind, extremely flawed. So one of the main measures we've used to, for trust in government is from the American National Election Studies. And the first time the questions were used was in the late 50s, early 60s. And I'm going to read you the question that is sort of the fundamental question that gets asked about trust in government. How much of the time do you think you can trust the government in Washington to do what is right? You're, you can say just about always, most of the time, or only some of the time. Now, the problem with that question, which we've used now for many, many years, the last time it was used was in 2012, um, is that it doesn't really measure what trust in government. And it doesn't tell us what we're being asked to, who we're being asked about or what we're being asked about. So when I think about my own history over that many years, there's sometimes when I've had a lot of confidence in government about policy X, but not about policy Y. I was opposed to the war in Vietnam, but I was for Johnson's war on poverty. Um, so what, how would I answer that question? Probably some of the time, right? That would be a sensible answer when the question is as vague as that. We continue to use that question because we have a baseline now. So we have a trend. I would use different measures totally different measures. First of all, if we're using a survey, I'd use a different set of questions that are much more specific about the individual we're talking about, the policies we're talking about, who do we trust about what? And what do we mean by trust? Do we mean competence? Do we mean that they're going to deliver on their promises here? Do they mean they can implement the policy? Is it fair? So if we're going to measure trust in government, I think what we really have to look at is behaviors and the ways in which citizens interact with government. I would look at social order and social disorder, feelings of safety and security, rules of the road, compliance with taxes, compliance with a variety of things, rather government policies, rather than at a survey. So another measure that I would use for trust in government is the extent to which there is social mobilization, demonstrating dissatisfaction with particular government practices or with government as a whole. And if we think about today, it's not that high. It's very high in certain populations who are very dissatisfied and have good reasons to be. But it's not, is it more than the 1960s? I doubt it. Is it more than the 1930s? Doesn't seem to be. So again, I think that by these kinds of measures, confidence in government is reasonably high.